Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, a look at the state of youth in Canada. It's not all gloom, but what are some of the challenges for young people? Housing affordability is a big problem for many. Rising debt levels may be setting up a younger generation for a harder future. And what do the jobs of that future look like? And what should young people be doing to prepare? That's all ahead. First, though, a look at the state of affairs for young people in Canada by the numbers. The number of young people in Canada aged 15 to 34 is at a high water mark, above 10 million in 2022 for the first time in our history. As a percentage of the total population, the number has held around 26% for a few years now, down from a high of 37% in the early 1980s. And they are educated. 66% of 25 to 34 year olds have an education beyond a high school diploma that compares with an OECD average of 47%. 24% have some kind of college credit that compares with 8% across the OECD. The employment rate for young people aged 15 to 30 is just shy of 80%, compared with 84% for 31 to 44 year olds and 85% for those aged 45 to 54. But COVID hit this group hard. Unemployment for those not in school rose 6%, and more than half of young people aged 15 to 19 not in school have non-permanent jobs. That's three times the rate of older Canadians. Young people are also taking on more debt, and 49% of insolvencies filed last year were by millennials aged 26 to 41, though they make up just 27% of adult Canadians. Their average age was 33, and their average debt was $47,000, 283. Well, the story for young people in Canada is both positive with higher educations and faster moving job prospects and negative with more debt and higher costs for housing. So is it a good time to be young in Canada? Jimmy Jean is chief economist and strategist at Desjardins, which has just completed a three part series on the state of affairs for young Canadians. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So where do you land on this question? It's easy to kind of feel pessimistic because of some of the big issues like affordability, but is it a good time to be young? Well, it, it, this is interesting because, you know, we wanted to really focus on, a, have a balanced view of what's going on for, for the youth. That We hear a lot about those negatives, but, uh, you know, Canada does have a lot to celebrate when you think about the fact that, uh, you know, you, you see the demographic weight of the youth in Canada. It's second only to the U.S. Uh, you have the fact that the vast majority of newcomers to Canada are within the 18 to 34 age bracket. So that's helping support uh, better dependency ratios than elsewhere. And also, when you look at the educational attainment of the Canadians, uh, it's comfortably above the OECD average. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, we have world-class universities. So all those factors are really you know, should mean that we can rely on a very dynamic and vibrant uh, set of young uh, individuals to take over uh, and advance Canada further in the next uh, coming decades. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, it's one of the things that attracted to me to this research is there's kind of an optimistic tone about it. Uh, d d you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. This is kind of a survey that actually leaves you feeling pretty good. Of course, young people, uh, Jimmy, armed with education, as your research shows they are, um, and, you know, some prospects, still have to work with the economy in front of them. Do we worry about this, what, what we're kind of bequeathing to this younger generation? Absolutely. So I think there's, uh, you know, there's uh, two big sets of worries. The, the first is individual. The other one is collective. On the individual side, it's really about the affordability issues that we discuss uh, every day. And really the, uh, the lack of a fair shot. You can do everything right, you know, going to school, uh, getting the right education, getting uh, a good start in your career, develop your career, and it's still much tougher to, uh, uh, you know, advance into uh, adulthood. And the other uh, anxiety, source of anxiety, is really the collective one, which is about climate change and what kind of world they're going to be uh, living uh, in in the next uh, coming decades. What's really fascinating is that we see those two challenges affecting decisions now, mm -hmm. uh, decisions like, uh, you know, when to start a family, how many kids to have, uh, when uh, you're able to, to ultimately buy a home and how much you still rely, very advanced into adulthood on your parents' wealth uh, to be able to, to make it through. So this is a set of challenge that other previous generations didn't have to deal with. 
It's a sizable proportion of the overall uh, population. You know, we tend to, have, of course, for many years focus, Jimmy, on the boomers and the influence that they've had, and um, older people vote more, so they tend to have outsized influence. But is this group likely to have a kind of a more dominating effect as the years go on, especially as you say we add new Canadians who tend to fall into this category? Absolutely. They uh, are going to be more and more influential uh, given that, you know, we're going to rely on uh, those uh, those young adults to, to really support the increasing costs of, uh, of, of health care, uh, the educational system, and, and really be the, uh, you know, they're going to be the key pillars of society and the economy going forward. So uh, for sure, we, we have to listen. And it's also a collective uh, duty to, to, to make sure that they, uh, you know, they can aspire to the same uh, sort of uh, advantages that previous generations could. So, for example, we see a bigger proportion that are forced to to rent now. But while we know that, you know, renters tend to accumulate much less wealth than those who have the opportunity to get into the housing market, the property market, uh, are there uh, steps being taken to address that? Because we're talking long-term issue. Of course, we need to build more. But uh, right now, we know that uh, bill home construction is actually going down, given mm -hmm. higher interest rates and high costs, uh, and not going up. So we have, uh, you know, our uh, work cut out for us. Jimmy, it's so good to have you for this. We appreciate your time. Always a pleasure. Jimmy Jean is chief economist and strategist at Desjardins. Coming up, from buying a house to managing debt, a closer look at the challenges facing Canada's younger generations. Stay with us.